Kashmir has always been famous for its breathtaking beauty. Lush valleys fed by winding rivers against the backdrop of the majestic Himalayan peaks. It has been a favorite spot for tourists, holiday travelers, climbers, and adventurers from all over the world. Terraced hillsides green with crops and slopes alive with color. Streets bustling with activity and markets crowded with shops, merchants, locals and tourists. The beauty of the terrain is matched only by that of its people, with their distinct chiseled features, colorful flowing attire and irresistible smiles. They live peaceful, idyllic lives, largely off the land. I knew it was going to be bad because of the terrain and, and what I had learned from talking to people about how the roads were out and, and just getting a, a, a picture even before I arrived in Kashmir of what logistically we were up against, talking to military personnel and different people. But nothing prepared me for what I saw when I got there. Homes were destroyed. People are all in shock is the best I could put it. They're, they're sitting there. I think some were really looking for the meaning of it all. They were, they were reflecting on what had happened, but a lot of them were just com completely disillusioned. They had just, they had no idea what to do. To see the tent villages all along the way, driving anywhere in the earthquake zone, vast tent villages, people who are homeless. So many children that were injured, horribly lacerated and broken, compound fractures, bones sticking out, children waiting in line to be helped and treated by, by our doctors. Houses that looked like they were one story that had previously been two because the bottom floor was completely smashed underneath it. I mean, half the, half the village has slid down the mountain and you can really see the, the impact. Just seeing families in a state that you, you know that, that they'll never in, in life fully recover from. Uh, was, was a very hard thing to deal with. The only thing I can explain it, it looked like an atomic, what you would think an atomic bomb would look like. I have never seen concrete so destroyed in my entire life. What I saw in Kashmir was just absolute, complete devastation and not really being a, an easy way to help people, not being an easy way to respond or even get there. It was flat. I would, I, the river, had changed its course because so many buildings had dumped into the side and they had fallen in. The river actually had to go around them and the concrete, the rebar is sticking up like a skeleton of a fish. You know, the concrete rips out and the rebar is sticking up. Literally sheared off mountains, not just blocked, but sheared off mountains and have to be re-blasted. Uh, and villages in high and remote areas that were cut off by, and, and even Getting to them by foot was difficult. And to think that people, people are in there. That was the thing that kept, that kept you, everyone's walking around scrounging things out of their house. But for me, the thought was, what happens when you move the piece of concrete and there, your wife is there? I, I literally was in tears many times the first 10 days. I just simply couldn't handle seeing children suffer the way they were suffering.
At 8.52 a.m. on October 8, 2005, the ground shook with such violence that nothing was left standing. The 7.6 earthquake struck without warning and in less than 60 seconds transformed paradise into what many describe as pure hell. Powerful jolts flattened almost all standing structures across 12,000 square miles. It left more than 80,000 people dead, tens of thousands injured, and 3.5 million homeless. झटका वो बच्चे भी इतने खौफजदा हो गए तो हम लोग खुद भी समझ नहीं पाए कि ये क्या है जैसे अखबार मैंने लिया तो इसमें जमीन हल गई तो हम ये रोड पे छलांग लगाए दुकानदारों ने भी लगा दी अखबार मेरे हाथ में था मैंने देखा तो ऊपर वो तार जो बिजली की की तारें थी वो भी ये हो गई उधर गाड़ी खड़ी रोड उस साइड से तो एकदम ऐसे झूले खाने लगी 852 व्हेन द अर्थक्वेक हैपन सो लाइक माय हाउस स्टार्ट मूविंग स्टार्ट शेकिंग इस कदर जलसाला था शदीद कि ना हम खड़े हो सकते थे और ना बैठ सकते थे अगर हम लोग खड़े होते थे वो जमीन इस कदर हिल रही थी कि मतलब कि हम लोग ऐसा था कि हमारे पैर जमीन पे नहीं लग रहे थे वो बिल्डिंग गिरने से एक खतरनाक किस्म का वो तूफान सा एक धुआं सा पैदा हो गया गर्दिश कुछ नजर नहीं आ रहा था मैं झटकों के साथ कभी इधर कभी उधर टू एंड फ्रो मूव कर रहा था पहला मामूली झटका हुआ था ऐसा आवाज आई ना तो बाद में खूब झटका हुआ जब हम लोग ने देखा ऐसे पहाड़ों से धुआं निकल रहा है जैसी नजर उठा के देखा कुछ नहीं था वो जो कच्चे मकान थे वो सब गिर चुके थे और इतना लोग खौफजदा वो छोटे-छोटे बच्चे स्कूल आए हुए थे उनके पेरेंट्स सारे भाग रहे थे कि हमारे बच्चे कहां हैं ये बच्चे स्कूल कॉलेज की तरफ थे वो माए उनकी तरफ जा रही थी और रो रही थी और लोग सजदे में गिड़गड़ा के खुदा से माफी मांग रहे थे जब मैं कमरे के अंदर जा रहा था तो ये सिचुएशन थी कि पूरा कमरा हिल रहा था तो मैंने आंखें बंद करके कलमा पढ़ के गया उसके पीछे उसको उठा के जैसे मैं बाहर निकल गया तो वो दीवार पीछे से गिर गई इन माय विलेज देयर वर 400 लाइक 500 हाउसेस ऑल आर वर लेवल टू ग्राउंड जजले के बाद हर तरफ लाशें लाशें पड़ी हुई थी लाशों का अंबार लगा हुआ था आदमी तो फिर नहीं थे सब थोड़े थोड़े आदमी थे तो एक दूसरे दो तीन आदमी पर करके तो उसको रोड पे नीचे आगे रोड है रोड पे लाया शहर बिल्कुल सुनसान बिल्कुल किसी की आवाजें नहीं आ रही थी जो पहाड़ गिरने की आवाजें आ रही थी और बिल्डिंग्स की मैंने सोचा क्या मत आ गई और मैं अकेला बच गया हूं अस्पताल की जो बिल्डिंग थी वो भी खत्म हो गई थी और वो डॉक्टर जो थे बस वो बाहर खड़े थे उन्होंने इतनी हिम्मत की थी कि उसी जंजले के दौरान वो बेड वगैरह जो थे वो अस्पताल के अंदर से खींच के बाहर निकाल दिए थे और जो थोड़ी दवाई वगैरह उनके पास थी फर्स्ट एड के लिए तो वो उन्होंने बाहर निकाल दी थी बहुत एक बेबसी देखी है मैं बता नहीं सकता आपको कि इतना मैंने कुछ देखा है कि मैं बता नहीं सकता आपको लोग बहुत ज्यादा मजबूर थे कि मैं यानी ऐसे लोगों के हालात थे कि दो दिन उन्होंने खुले आसमान के नीचे गुजार दिए थे और फिर उनके लिए कोई चीज नहीं थी छोटे-छोटे मासूम बच्चे ऊपर से बारिश तो वो तो कह रहे थे कि किसी तरह कोई चीज हमें मिल जाए 
As news of the devastation spread, help began to pour in from all corners of the world. Doctors, engineers, medical teams, and individual volunteers came in troves, organizing rescue and relief efforts. They brought medicines, first aid, clothes, food, blankets, tents, and anything else that was required. We don't have a political agenda or religious agenda. It's a humanitarian agenda. We donate medical supplies, equipment, and medicines to local healthcare providers, so NGOs that are working inside the countries that we try to support. We just try to give them the tools that they need to continue to do their job. Well, USAID has been active in South Asia for many decades, um, including in Pakistan. Uh, CDRS's mission is uh, we're committed to being there in, in Kashmir until April 2008. Despite the many differences, the cultural, linguistic, ethnic, religious, historical reasons that tend to group people as they are, um, certain things cut through all that and, uh, and that does call to service uh, many people and you see them sometimes for a short period of time and also staying engaged for a period of time and realizing that they found a calling that, that means something to them. There is another face to northern Pakistan and Kashmir. The media has painted the region as a hotbed of violence that spawns militants, insurgents, and mujahideen. Al-Qaeda sympathizers are said to reside in the area, and it is often rumored that Osama bin Laden is somewhere in its mountains. There are frequent advisories out for Americans not to travel in the region. I've talked to people who seem to think that, um, that I was nuts for going there. You know, there's a terrorist behind every tree, you know, is, is the perception. Particularly now when we're painting with broad brushstrokes the war on terror, and the, the danger is that it paints everyone from a particular region as a terrorist, and it's not true. I had people come up to me and said before, uh, we didn't particularly care too much for Americans. The beard, the turban, and a shawar kameez are probably the three most foreign things to, to Americans. The only things you see about countries are protests or bombings or conflict. It gives a distorted view of the reality that happens every day. Anyone, if you say you're going to Pakistan because they're influenced by the news and the media, they, I'm sure there's a little thought in the back, you know, she's going to be the next uh, hostage or something like that, you know. The media tells a story and often it is a, it is a small snapshot that is a bad picture of bad news, uh, some, something bad, something negative. That's usually what makes it into the news. Am I going to be in danger? The, all those moments were going through my mind. And I had a conversation with my nephew uh, about this, and it was so alarming to me when he says, um, I don't know if I can go with you, Auntie, because um, it's better if I go when after I join the military because then I'll have my gun. I'm like, where does that idea come from? I wasn't this guy who, you know, wanted to go out there and kill everyone and hated Muslims and, you know, didn't care about this region. I really cared. I wanted to do something good. And It's a challenge to get out of the, the American bubble and understand what's happening in the world. Um, the images that we receive on the news tend to be the bad things that happen around the world. Most people here had never seen an American. They had heard stories of Afghanistan and Iraq and of large helicopters that rained only fire and missiles. The Americans have also perceptions about the Muslims, that the Muslims are terrorists, but actually they are not. In that area, all of America was a bad person. If they were bad, there was no reason for it. It was not so much that the American country could so help us with our support. हमारे साथ हेल्प कर सकता है कि हम लोग का ख्याल कर रहा है ऐसा नहीं था उन लोगों के माइंड में ये चीजें नहीं थी लोगों के ख्यालात थे आम भी लोग भी सोचते थे कि अमेरिका ने पहले भी इराक में उसने बमबारी की है बम बरसाएं व्हेन द अमेरिकन चैपल दिस हैड अमेरिकन चैपल लाइक शो नोक दे वर मूविंग हियर ऑलमोस्ट एवरीडे लाइक 20 टाइम्स अ डे so they thought that here you go, here the Americans are, they start going to bombing us. Like that we all, all the Taliban were talking about. They were bombing us, they were bombing us, they were bombing us, they were bombing us. The media tells us everything, and I am a very young person, and I didn't meet with the Americans with the Americans, or something like that. In my mind, there was also a concept that the Americans were a 
دوسرے لوگوں کو دوسرے ملکوں کو دباتے ہیں اور سپر پاور ہونے کا فائدہ اٹھاتے ہیں آئی واز ٹاکنگ ٹو مائی فرینڈس دے اینڈ دے ار ایجوکیٹڈ بٹ دے ور تھنکنگ دیٹ اوکے ناؤ دا امریکنز ار ہیئر دے ار گوئنگ ٹو لیو ہیئر فار ایور ہم امریکہ کے مخالف نہیں ہیں ہم تو امریکہ کا جو موجودہ وہ نظام جو چل رہا ہے ہم تو اس کے مخالف ہیں دی انجریز ور ڈریڈفل بروکن لمز کرشڈ سکلز کمپاؤنڈ فریکچرز اینڈ انٹرنل بلیڈنگ The doctors worked frantically with limited medications and only the most basic tools, sometimes treating patients under the open sky. U.S. Army Chinooks dropped in every few minutes, bringing aid and taking out the injured. In the end, it was the volunteers and their compassion that made it possible for the survivors to begin their lives again. It would be more painful to stay sitting on the couch watching people suffer knowing I had the ability to do something about it. What is going to be the catalyst that makes them get back to work or, or back, to the, you know, back to their normal life? What's going to provide normalcy? I originally only came to be there for 10 days. We thought that the best move for them was to start rebuilding their homes out of the rubble of their home rather than wait for a tent. The Rural Health Center in Chikar is going to be rebuilt anywhere in, in, in the, from a year to a year and a half is the last uh, estimate that I was given. And through that time, the people there, over 100,000 people in those four union councils, would not have access to, uh, to local and nearby uh, basic health care. We would try to take care of these people who were isolated from Bog, which was about five hours by foot away. There simply wasn't Uh, anybody in those four union councils that, that were going to stay long enough for the new hospital to be built. We started doing this, you know, we would, we would pretty much be day laborers and we would help break apart homes and explain that, use the material as best you can just to get you off the ground for the snow and something permanent so that it won't be crushed under the snow load and it was working really well. There's people who ha have lost limbs or had injuries in the earthquake that need some kind of long-term aftercare or rehabilitation. But there's also, you know, heart attacks and, and gynecological issues and pediatrics and uh, acute respiratory infection. We started this process and it just took off. It was, it was nicknamed Winter Race. And every IFRC, ICRC, IOM, Save the Children, everyone adopted it. So we taught these classes in Islamabad for about four days on how to go into the field with a small team identify the people who need the housing the most, help them rebuild the housing, not just distribute, because we found out the hard way that if you show up somewhere and you distribute, the people who end up with the product are the people who need it the least. We are getting support from UNICEF and World Health Organization, so we're working directly in partnership with a lot of uh, larger UN-sponsored agencies as well. The village of Ratnoy was actually surrounded by 17 villages. And because that was the helicopter pad, it became the hub. So everybody was going there. So we decided a BHU, which is a basic health unit, would be really effective in that spot. You could fly in supplies, fly in doctors. It was a good point as a, as a center. We have a gynecologist. We have general physicians. We have uh, psychiatrists psychiatrists and psychologists. We have volunteers and medical students and doctors, uh, uh, internists um, come in from the states. And we have local staff there as well that worked with me all through the acute phase. When Todd Shea heard about the destruction caused by the earthquake, he took the first available flight to Pakistan to join the rescue and relief operations, leaving his home and family behind. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Setting Good up a medical you. facility here, he Slow provides medical, free health care and medicines to anyone and everyone Slow in the region. Hello, how are you? A lot of children up here in the Chikar area that without CDRS, they would not have any kind of proper medical care. Uh, for, uh, you know, the minor and major uh, problems that children have. Up here there's scabies, 
there's uh, diarrhea, there's, there's a lot of problems that can lead to very serious uh, infections that can, that can uh, be life-threatening. He worked at Ground Zero when the Twin Towers fell and helped save lives during the tsunami in Sri Lanka and Hurricane Katrina. They're doing better. They're going to be okay. Well, we have um, uh, a partner NGO who gives limbs to people that, I mean, they're doing it for the earthquake victims, but also for uh, anyone who needs a prosthetic leg. He's doing better today. Yeah. Did, he, did he like his ball? Ask him, does he like his ball uh, that I gave him? <laughs> Good. Good. I'm glad. This is where we keep all of the supplies and pharmaceuticals, infant formula, different supplies. These backpacks are often used for uh, if we need to go out, if we have an accident or somewhere where we need to go off the property and have emergency drugs available. And we would send them out with doctor teams to high mountain ridges. See the patients, uh, they line up with their prescriptions and they get their drugs here. Absolutely free of charge. Not any money is changed hands. No, no fees are charged for the patients uh, for consultation or for any reason. Assalamu alaikum. How are y'all doing? Did they let you play cricket in the afternoon? Gotcha. You got a great field out here for cricket. मेरे लिए इन्होंने आटा दिया मुझे पैसे पांच सौ रुपए दिया मेरा इसने पता किया जा कर घर में मुझे दो तीन दफा जाके मेरा इसने पूछा खाला क्या हाल है You guys know that one of the things that I harp on is organization of of not only our workspace but our living space. But we have to basically have him taken to the center with the dentist. CDRS. It's a little rough for me. So besides his teeth, what's his problem? Well, you know what? I was going to give you a piece of candy, <laughs> but after they said that the problem is uh, the teeth, I don't know, maybe that's not a good idea to give me a piece of candy. I really fell in love with the people in Kashmir. Uh, I, I, I came to help, and I fell in love with the children there. I fell in love with the people. Um, I found them to be very decent and hardworking and stoic and strong people in the face of this. When the choppers came, they dropped food and medicines, bringing in doctors and taking away the injured. Over time, the choppers would come to symbolize the Americans in a very different way. The relief effort saw sworn enemies work shoulder to shoulder, giving aid, medical assistance, and saving lives, and through all, gaining a new perspective on each other and the human community. The work of international volunteers, their compassion and dedication have changed long-standing attitudes and perceptions of the people in this region. And the warmth, trust and hospitality of the Pakistani people have won the hearts of many an American who have taken back with them tales of courage, survival and faith. People who once looked at each other with only distrust and suspicion have found themselves working hand in hand for the common cause of humanity. As one grateful Pakistani survivor said to an American relief worker, humanity is the religion now. We don't say that all Americans are all the same. Okay? As you can see, good people will also meet in Pakistan. Bad people will also meet in Pakistan. They will also meet in the whole world. Americans did a great job here in Kashmir. And they were the first people who start bringing the aid and taking out the patients. They were the first people. Now, when Americans came here, people's ideas were a little different. We were able to 
के बारे में सोचते हैं कि हम इनके लिए ये कर सकते हैं ये कर सकते हैं उस तरह अमेरिकन भी इन लोगों आवाम के लिए ये सोचते हैं कि हम इनके लिए अच्छा सोचेंगे और अच्छा करेंगे अमरीका ने भी काफ़ी इमदाद किया और वो हमारी तरफ भेजा काफ़ी सारे टेंट थे और इसके अलावा जितना राशन भेज सकते थे और रुपया पैसा भी वो लो, उन लोग ने अच्छा भेजा है Americans are here. They are just here for help us, and they were helping us a lot. वो पक्के खाने भी बेचते थे, थैली भी बेचते, नीचे होके थे, फेंकते थे, अरे किसी से भी फेंकते थे वो लोग। बच्चों के लिए टॉफ़ यहाँ और ये बिस्कुट ये ज़्यादा फेंकते थे, दूध, माचों तक फेंकते थे। लोगों के काफी हालात बदल चुक और बहुत अच्छे इंसान हैं और अच्छा सोचते हैं अच्छा सोचते हैं मुसलमानों के लिए भी अच्छा सोचते हैं और एक उनके दिल में रहम है और दर्द है उनके दिल में उन्होंने अच्छा काम किया है हम तो ये कहते हैं कि बिल्कुल वो तो अपनी जगह पे बात लेकिन उन्होंने इमदाद बिल्कुल की है बेशक उनके हेलीकॉप्टर आए उनके ज़रिए से उन्होंने हमारे इलाके में दूर दराज जो इलाका था वहाँ पर राशन सप्लाई किए खेमे लोगों को दिए Who can left his own life, his own family, his own comfort to come in disaster area and trying to help the Muslims? That's that's the only people can do which have a kind heart for the humanity. Perceptions fall away when we really need help, and perceptions fall away when you're giving help. Well, the hostilities that occur in the political realm, in the business realm, in the religious realm, I think they often dissipate. Uh, after a crisis. Our military and our assistance workers from the DART and our NGOs who had the opportunity to work up there for the first time ever in that part of Pakistan will never forget the warmth with which they were greeted, the thanks that they received from moms and dads and children. Um, so it goes both ways. The worst things that you can imagine happening to people often bring out the best qualities in our species of human beings, this overriding concern for uh, people who are much different than them and live in much different circumstances, but this uh, deep-seated desire to help. Pakistan is not the Pakistan that uh, is portrayed. There may be some truth to those stories here and there, but across the board, over and all, overall, I've met wonderful people there. We are going to win people over by when they really need us being there and helping them out. When people know you really want to help them, you don't need to say anything else. You don't need to have policies. You don't need to have a person in, with a gun. Because people know you really care. It's that opportunity to connect on an individual level and show somebody that, you know, we do care. It's not just that I personally care. It's also that my government cares because I can't offer you much if it's just me. I need to have resources behind me in terms of medical equipment and housing materials and all the rest, um, is to show that there is a, a wonderful, generous side to my country as well. Anyone who has ever been touched by this tragedy has come away with at least one common lesson, that what binds us is far stronger than all the things that separate us, that we are all human. There are not just radicals in, you know, the Middle East or in, it's not an exclusive to any part of the world. There are radicals everywhere. And, but the majority of people are like you and me. The, the tragedy of loss at a person level is universal. Uh, a person losing their child is extraordinarily tragic in any culture. And one of the things that, uh, that I try to teach my son is to care about people on the other side of the earth. Some people um, that we see here directly, they're just, they realize uh, that what uh, an image that they see on television, that could be me, that could be my family, I can do something. I was concerned I am about my job or my income or the next car I'm going to uh, buy. Um, those people have nothing and I have a lot. The important thing to me is that people um, see for themselves what other people are like and 
go deeper than what's on the surface or what they hear about those people. When it comes to uh, Pakistan, uh, I can say for certain that I have lived, worked, loved, and continue to love the people who are great people and are among the finest people I've ever met. Where most people are really concerned, just like in this country, um, about the welfare of themselves and their families, and those motivations are pretty basic. They lose a family member and they're devastated. They um, work very hard every day to provide for their families. They love their children. They want their children to have a better life than they do. Those are something common to all humans. People tend to be able to set aside their differences for a time and realize that whatever fight that we had going on before, we can pick that up later, but this was just um, something unforeseen and, and purely tragic. I call it my true north, you know, that uh, you kind of get reoriented to what's important in life and you realize all the stupid things that we think are important here aren't really important. Dig, dig a little deeper for the truth and before you think the worst about somebody because you might be wrong and what if you do something based on that false interpretation or that, fa that misperception and then where does that lead? It leads nowhere. Many times I've climbed up the wrong tree. I picked deadly blossoms that should be out of reach. Stretching my soul to the edge of life's shroud. Clutching those flowers as I tumbled to the ground. But the man upstairs, he must be watching over me. Cause my prophesied demise just wasn't meant to be You see it's not the end my friend Cause I will rise again We will rise again Pakistan will rise again